Hello again, brothers and sisters. Well, I just got done reading a chapter of the Bible, and I'm supposed to share this with you. If those of you have been with me any time at all, um, remember, I did a little series on spiritual warfare. And there were a couple of videos in that that gave a list of things that we were supposed to clean out of our homes. Anything that had to do with the occult, Indian relics, anything of, that had to do with foreign gods, witchcraft, things you might think were innocent, we needed to throw out. You need to check those lists off. Watch those videos. Um, the ones that have to do with spiritual warfare, there's like six parts. And then I did another one that said something else the Lord had me to get rid of, and now the devil's mad. I think that's what it's called. Okay, I'm going to read you this chapter, and I suggest you pay attention, because even though the Lord doesn't do this to us this day, this is how serious he was. When he gave them a list of things, They this is when Israelites came out of the desert, now, Moses had died or was raptured. It, scholars have said both ways, but I understand that he died. But anyway, Joshua takes over and leads them into the promised land, right? So they have to fight the Nephilim, Canaanites, Jebusites, all the ites. Okay, here we are. I'm going to pull this forward. Try to put me right in the middle. I'm in Joshua seven uh chapter seven verse one but the sons of israel acted unfaithfully in regard to the things under the ban now they had been ordered the very first city they took they were not to take any loot they were to uh burn kill everyone and burn everything which used to really bother me that they had to kill the children until I realized it's because they were children of the Nephilim. So they had what we now know is reptilian blood, alien, foreign angel blood in them. Okay, so now here they've taken over a city and somebody took some of the loot that they weren't supposed to and hid it in their belongings. Now this is what happened. Okay, Joshua 7, verse 1. But the sons of Israel acted unfaithfully in regard to the things under the ban. I'm in the NASB on blueletterbible.org. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, from the tribe of Judah, took some of the things under the ban. Therefore, the anger of the Lord burned against the sons of Israel. One person in the whole lot of them took some things, and now the anger of the Lord burned against the sons of Israel. Aren't you glad that Jesus died for us, redeemed us, and brought mercy? All right, let me continue. Joshua 7 2. Now, Joshua sent men from Jericho to. I should have looked this one up. I want to pronounce this right. It's just spelled A I. And it's pronounced. Strong's H 5857. I. I. Okay. I. Second entry. A Yah. A Yah. A Yah. Hmm. Okay, so Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, Ayah, which is near Beth Avon, east of Bethel, and said to them, Go up and spy out the land. So the men went up and spied out Ayah. They returned to Joshua and said to him, Do not let all the people go up. Only about two or three thousand men need go up to Ayah. Do not make all the people toil up there, for they are few. Ah, that's what they thought. 
So about 3,000 men from the people went up there, but they fled from the men of Ayah. The men of Ayah struck down about 36 of their men, their men and pursued them from the gate as far as Shebarim and struck them down on the descent. So the hearts of the people melted and became as water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until the evening, both he and the elders of Israel, and they put dust on their heads. Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, why did you ever bring this people over the Jordan only to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? If only we had been willing to dwell beyond the Jordan. Verse 8. O Lord, what can I say since Israel has turned their back before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear of it, and they will surround us and cut off our name from the earth. And what will you do for your great name? So the Lord said to Joshua, Rise up! Why is it you have fallen on your face? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them. And they have even taken some of the things under the ban, and have both stolen and deceived. Moreover, they have also put them among their own things. Therefore, the sons of Israel cannot stand before their enemies. They turn their backs before their enemies, for they have become accursed. I will not be with you any more unless you destroy the things from under the ban from your midst. Verse 13. Rise up. Consecrate the people and say, Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. See, he had to consecrate them and teach them, tell them to consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, has said, There are things under the ban in your midst. O Israel, you cannot stand before your enemies until you have removed the things under the ban from your midst. At this point, he didn't know who or how many. In the morning, then, you shall come near by your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord takes by lot shall come near by families, and the family which the Lord takes shall come near by households, and the household which the Lord takes shall come near man by man. It shall be that the one who is taken with the things under the ban shall be burned with fire, he and all that belongs to him, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord. And because he has committed a disgraceful thing in Israel. You see, the Lord God demanded obedience. He, he, was, he was even more, way more strict with Israelites. They were a small group of people, but they were chosen. And he expected them do exactly what he said do and not to do exactly what he said not to do or there were consequences to be paid and it is still as important for us to be obedient or our consequences could be eternal damnation okay so there is still consequences when you're not obedient. Okay, let me continue. All right, verse 16. 
So Joshua arose early in the morning and brought Israel near by tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. He brought the family of Judah near, and he took the family of the Zerahites, and he brought the family of the Zerahites near man by man, and Zabdi was taken. He brought his household near man by man, and Achan, son of Carmi, son of Zabdi, son of Zerah, from the tribe of Judah, was taken. And Joshua said to Achan, it's Achan, it's hard to say when you say it right, My son, I implore you, give glory to the Lord, the God of Israel, and give praise to him. And tell me now what you have done. Do not hide it from me. So Achan answered Joshua and said, Truly I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel, and this is what I did. I saw When I saw among the spoil a beautiful mantle from Shinar and two hundred shekels of silver and a bar of gold, fifty shekels in weight, then I coveted them and took them, and behold, they are concealed in the earth inside my tent with the silver underneath it. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran to the tent, and behold, it was concealed in his tent with the silver underneath it. They took them from inside the tent and brought them to Joshua and to all the sons of Israel. And they poured them out before the Lord. Then Joshua and all of Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, the silver, the mantle, the bar of gold, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and all that belonged to him. And they brought them up to the valley of Achor. Joshua said, Why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. And all Israel stoned them with stones, and they burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. They raised over him a great heap of stones that stands to this day, and the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger Therefore, the name of that place has been called the Valley of Achor to this day. And that means trouble. The Valley of Trouble is what the word Achor ach <laughs> means. Not really funny. It's a very sad story. And the Lord said, be obedient. Boy, he meant it. Okay. Let me get rid of this. Now, if you haven't yet done your house cleaning, maybe you haven't been with my channel very long, I suggest you go look at my spiritual warfare videos, the series. It'll be a part one, part two, all the way to part six. Like I said, and then there's another video, a couple videos later, it'll say something else the Lord had me get rid of. And it made the devil mad. Uh, you should be able to tell by the titles. It hasn't been that long ago. Two of those videos have lists of things that we as Christians should not have in our possession. And they do open doors for demonic entrance. It, 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 it opens a door for demons to come in and harass you. So I got rid of a bunch of stuff. It took me uh, like over a month to gather it all. But I immediately got rid of the stuff I knew right off the bat had to go. And then I kept working on it. It just takes me a while to just clean out a closet because of my limited energy. But the Lord knew 
that I knew what was in there and what was I was going to get rid of. So I pray that you will do the same thing and clean out your house. This all came about the week the week before or during Passover because all you know it was strange how the Israelites every year the Orthodox Jews will start getting rid of their leaven if they're doing things by the Bible, by the way they they were told to, they would start cleaning out all the leaven in their house before Passover. And, I mean, down to the last crumb out of a couch cover, you know what I'm saying? That's just, they get rid of all the leaven. And all of this came about right before Passover when people were supposed to be getting rid of all their leaven. So I thought that was really cool. So anyway, I'll end it there. So I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and the internet connection and over each and every one of you as well. All right. You have a good night or a good day. And I say goodbye for now. I'll talk to you later.